invite you to be with me in a spirit of prayer. Come to us, Holy Spirit, come. Come upon us. Come upon us as the wind, as breath, as spirit. Breathe into us. Refresh us, fill us, renew us. Come to us as a flame, a fire that is unquenchable, a constant reminder of your passion for us, for all creation. Come to us as wind and as fire and come to us as light and reveal yourself to us. Dispel the shadows that now and again keep us from being able to see each other. The shadows that sometimes leave us wandering in deep darkness. The shadows that sometimes make it difficult for us to sense your nearness and your presence within us. Come to us as fire and as breath, as wind and as light. Convict us, O Lord. Center us. Consecrate and bless us. Claim us ever as your own. In the living Christ we pray. Amen. When I was growing up in a small Swiss community in the southernmost reaches of Wisconsin, the church that I attended was the Swiss United Church of Christ. And it was in 1957, the year that the United Church of Christ came in formally to being, that I was confirmed in that church. But in the front of that sanctuary, as you looked uh, forward, uh, on either side, there were two artistic renderings of Jesus. And the one on the right was a picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And the one on the left was a far stormier scene. It was a scene that showed Jesus reaching down to Peter, who trying to walk on the water to come to Jesus he found himself in deep water, and it was not good. Those pictures were etched in my mind, and the text from John that we've shared this morning is a text that speaks of that occasion when the disciples were, were on that boat, and it was stormy, and that unsettled weather cause them distress. The nature of water is interesting as we look at scripture. There is in the 107th Psalm words that speak to the subtler meanings that can attach to the seas and to water. The plight of the disciples and their cry for help echo this passage, and let me share it with you. It describes a people in a storm at sea. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. And then, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress, and he made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. The 107th Psalm. I have to believe that the writer of the Gospel as this story is told, has that imagery from that 107th Psalm 
clearly in mind as well. The storms that generate over the waters come upon us quickly. Those who did not survive in Branson, Missouri, so very recently, when the sudden storm came up and capsized their craft, know what these words speak about. We know about threatening waters. But we also know about threatening waters that in ways that creep up on us and take us by surprise. I don't spend a lot of time in the toy department at Walmart, but this last week I happened to be out there to pick up something that was important and on my way I thought, I want to take a look and see what's here because I used to enjoy going through the toy department with the children and the kids and see what was, you know, the thing that was current at this point. Well, I went past the aisle where all the preschool items were, and there were some pretty novel things there. It made me feel young all over again. And then I went to the next aisle, and there was a little bit more that was a little more sophisticated, a little more mature, a variety of games and activities, inside and out sorts of things. And then I came to an aisle that was all pink, and that told me something as well. And then I came to an aisle that from one end to the other had weapons. And let me share with you their names. The Retaliator, the Twin Shock that blasts two darts at once, the Dreadbolt, the Decimator, an Eradicator, 28 inches in length, a gun called the Afflicted, or a Rapid Fire, the Legend Fire that comes with 18 darts and two ammo cartridges and shoots 80 feet, the Enforcer, the Flip Fury, the Accelerator, the Auto Advancing Blasters, the Brain Saw, the Sharp Fire, these are really interesting, interesting toys, the Cyclone Shock, the Cataclysm, the Raptor Strike, 36 inches long, the Guardian, the Surge Fire, the Alpha Hawk, the Falcon Fire, the Exact Strike Pistol with precision accuracy that only cost $2.50, the Rogue Recoil Weapon, which says that the world is now game. These were for children eight and a half and up or 12 and a half and up. The rival had 50 high impact rounds. Experience the intensity. For 100 rounds, you can get one for $78. 50 tactical strike rounds. A note in caution in very fine print at the bottom of the packaging, do not aim at the eyes or the face. Then tactical gear, this is not a protective device, a face mask with team colors is available. I was reeling by that time as I made my way through that aisle, and the next aisle was all Legos. And the, the, there were the classic types of Legos, and then all of a sudden there's the Lego Friends series that has the snow resort with the hot chocolate van, the snow resort chalet, Mia's tree house, the friendship house, the sunshine catamaran, Stephanie's house, Cinderella's enchanted evening, the dream castle, and Andrea's park performance. <laughs> you never know what you're going to run into when you go to Walmart. The contrast was stunning to me, but when I thought of the ways in which things that, that speak of harsh interaction among people are marketed for boys and girls eight and a half and up, I was arrested because I had to believe that those stormy seas that threaten to engulf the disciples are not only limited to places where there's water. Those places of danger and risk are right in the midst of us, and they encroach upon us in ways that are subtle. This morning, if you noticed news summaries in either the New York Times or the Washington Post, there is a person in Texas who, with 3D manufacture, has figured out how to create a, an AR-15, 
And during the Obama administration, that movement to post that, the directions online was halted. And within the last week, that was reversed, which sets the stage for people being able to download those instructions and create for themselves a working weapon that is untraceable. The stormy waters have ways of lapping at our feet and before we know it, engulfing us. The text that we've shared about the disciples and Jesus on the water interestingly comes after a text where Jesus has gathered those who have followed him because they were hungry and the 5,000 are fed. In this space, in this space, we are between a place of feeding and we are in a world where there are great dangers that lurk on many sides. When Craig spoke to me earlier about this service this summer and being able to share with you in this space, I was delighted because this is open, open in ways that is liberating for us, I want you all to breathe deeply and to feel that, feel that breath and to feel the sunshine that's filtering through this, this green cathedral and touching you in your heart right now. We always find ourselves when we come to worship in a sacred space a sacred space wherein we're acutely conscious of our need to be fed and the feeding that comes to us through a living word and through the company and the fellowship that we can share together. We are in that, 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 that special space where around us also there are waters that can turn rough and dangerous in a fleeting moment. This is also a special occasion because of where we are and why we're here. Last year, I remember after the service that Quinn had shared with all of us here, I walked down the Onondaga through the, the street and I went into place after place and you want to check these out. You want to check these out, the places that are in the church and the places that are here all the way down to the cathedral and around because the people who are within these places that we can welcome and say hello to and say that we're glad that they're here and we're glad we're here together, there is a, an imagination and a creativity that has thrived in their hearts and minds which has resulted in the creation of the things that are sewn or that are painted or that are crafted or that are produced. All of this energy, this passion that goes into this kind of creative effort is something that we can stand in awe of. And it is a privilege for us to be able to share, share this space, this space with that creativity and that imagination. I came down from Oswego today and that's my, my travel every Sunday morning because this is a place that has come to mean uh, uh, something dear and special to me. And over the year I've gotten to know, at least there are more faces that are familiar, and I also see a face that I remember from Pulaski, which touches my heart as well. But I'm just grateful to be able to share it because what Plymouth, what that name behind me, behind, in front of you, speaks of is a witness. It is a, a faith that has come alive for, for a very long time in ways that has been world changing and in ways that takes you and me as we come into this space and meets us with music and with spirit and with love and with heart in ways that we are never the same again. We come here because we want to live. You and I want to live. That is what we want because God has enabled us to have that desire planted deeply in our hearts. Now, speaking of hearts, I have to tell you that I had a little development in my own life this past week. I come to Syracuse for a lot of things. Um, 
people that live way out come to Syracuse for a lot of things. It's kind of a nerve center where things happen. But I discovered that I have to have a pacemaker installed on Tuesday. So Tuesday morning I'll be coming down here for a little different purpose. And they will be able to insert some wires in here someplace and do some electrical work, just a little, little bit of little electrical work and, and <laughs> try to get things going right. We all come to this moment with a heart, with a heart that is God-given, with a heart that beats with a rhythm that is divinely inspired, with a heart that enables us to look upon the world and see things in ways we've never seen them before. And it might be a visit to Walmart, or it might be a time when you're out for dinner, or it might be a quiet time at the end of the day when you're watching the news and you're asking to yourself what is going to happen next. But may it be thus for you, that you know that God reaches through all space and time to touch your heart and hold you gently in God's loving embrace. And then, having done that, tells you to go out into this world that is around it, us and do the same thing for all of those whose lives we touch on our journey. Let us be in prayer. Gracious and, and loving God, we give thanks for the breezes that we can feel on our face this day. We give thanks for the love that weaves our lives together. We give thanks for our ability to think, to reason, to explore, to discover. We give thanks for feelings, all the feelings of our, our life, and we give thanks for your light that draws us into your very heart. Hear the prayers we speak aloud this day, but especially, O oh Lord, hear the prayers that flow consistently and continuously like a river deep within our hearts and our minds. Draw us close to each other, close to all of your world, and close to you. In Christ we pray. Amen.